Hi YouTubers! I just thought I'd do a quick video and talk about a few things. One of the things I was hoping to catch on this video was the female pigeon blood all the way to the left is doing some mating type behavior where she's shimmying, she's cleaning the glass, she's trying to attract her mate over to her and you can see the snakeskin mate is now moving in. He continually is disrupting this couple. So I'm considering starting a new breeder tank to breed them, although I'm kind of on the fence because I also am considering adding a new fish into this particular tank. So I'll have a total of six discus. And that alone could change the dynamics so I'm giving it some thought. It's not something I want to rush into, um, but definitely something I'm thinking about. And I'd love to have your input or any suggestions um, on what you guys think would be the better uh, solution. Well, it's not really a solution. I don't really have a problem here. It's just I kind of want to add a, a fish or more fish uh, to this tank and possibly another tank as well. So, I either want to breed the couple over here that wants to breed or add another fish to the tank, which could allow them to breed inside this community tank because it could change the dynamics and the pecking order to the point where they would be allowed to breed. The snakeskin could have someone lower on the pecking order. The new fish obviously would probably be the low man, but that's not guaranteed. You never know. Um, usually a newcomer is lowest on the totem pole, but not always. It all depends on the fish and his personality. Um, but definitely I'm having an, an issue with this blue snakeskin who's now down at the bottom left-hand corner, corner of your screen. Um, he just continually blocks the breeding habits of this one couple. And you can see the female now. She's cleaning the glass. She's doing her little shimmy. She desperately wants to breed, and she's definitely ready. They've had several uh, breeding cycles now where they've laid eggs, but the male always eats the eggs, and I, I truly believe it's because of this other aggressive male. It's just too much pressure on him. Um, the tank is perfect. The parameters, the water parameters are ideal for breeding. Um, I, every other day or so, I will add and take out a little bit of peat that I have in a bag. And the reason why I don't leave it in there is because the amount of tannins it was producing was drastically lowering my pH. And I didn't know it was going to do that. <laughs> so that's something that I learned through trial and error. If you add peat to your tank, or if you add almond leaves or anything like that, not only does it produce those tannins, which, you know, is nice in an Amazon tank like this, I actually prefer that little bit of, you know, brownish tinge in the water. It gives it a real natural look. But it does affect the pH. And these particular fish, uh, which are Stentker fish from Hans, they are not used to Amazonian pH levels. So these guys are used to tap water levels, which are much higher than would be in, in, in the Amazon. So that's something to think about if you do want to, you know, have that Amazon look. Um, now if you had the wild fish, they probably would appreciate those lower pHs. But those two, you have to remember, a lot of these wild discus that are called wild are actually not wild anymore. You have to be careful with that. It depends on where you're getting them. Um, they are, you know, being prolifically bred uh, domestically now. So that's just something to think about as well. So you can see there, the female just got mad at the snake skin and gave him a little nip and said get out of here and you can see right now on the turquoise up there he's got a scale that is completely flipped over. so his scale is flipped over and it's white uh, but it happens he's been picked on a lot so he'll be okay he's fine um, so I actually had to restart this video because I ran out of uh, space so I had to delete some stuff 
So if you notice a little choppiness, that's why. I'm obviously not an expert videographer. <laughs> it's not my thing, but I do my best. So back to the fish. Back to the, uh, the saga of this poor lady over here, this poor mama I call her. She wants to have babies so bad, and I want her to have babies. I, I think they'd make cute little babies. Um, love to see their fry, and I would love to be able to uh, see what I could do with breeding. I've bred other fish, but not discus, so this would be a new one for me, and I'd, I'd really like to give it a go. But again, it's this blue snakeskin who here he comes like a stealthy shark. He's coming over and he's going to do what he always does. And he's just going to get in the way, push that male back and just be an overall problem. Um, so something's got to change. Just got to figure out how I want to do it. So what else can we talk about with discus? Uh... Well, these guys are now fully grown. Uh, the tank is well established, the community. Um, we could talk about water changes. I read so much about water changes online. It's such a critical thing with discus. Um, and a lot of it is confusing. I just feel so bad for the person starting out and has no other resource uh, for learning other than the internet because there's just so much conflicting information online that it's got to be hard and the thing about water changes is it's different when you're growing out discus than when they're adults if you have an established tank like this one here that has a very good balance of beneficial bacteria and beneficial organisms that help to balance the water, the chemistry, the water chemistry in the tank. You know, it used to be when I was younger, it was very common to have a community fish tank, a tropical, a freshwater, and we're talking about freshwater primarily, where you could let it go for months. If you had a well-established tank where you had plants and you had, you know, you had your bottom feeders and you had your sucker fish and you had you know a very well established community tank you could have healthy fish and let it go for months I had tanks where I had cichlids and I wouldn't do a water change for three months and, and maybe more and they would be just fine and the ammonia levels would not be off the charts like you would think and it's kinda weird the pendulum has swung into this new you know the other side where it's now you have to do water changes every day I see people saying that every day well, I can tell you folks that when I grew out these discus, I was not doing water changes every day. If I had to do that, I don't think I'd be in this hobby. That's just too much. I also did not have a bare bottom tank, which is another thing that is, you know, demanded by some people who claim to be experts. They say, you have to have a bare bottom tank. You have to do daily water changes of 50% or more. Well, Here's living proof right in front of your eyes. These fish are alive, they're adult, they're meaty, they're big, they're healthy, and they weren't brought up that way. Um, I did water changes every other day. Sometimes I would skip, you know, and go a little longer. You know, let your water be the guide. Get yourself a good kit, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Let your water be the guide. If your ammonia levels are not high, if your nitrate levels are not high, and your nitrate levels are not high, that's telling you that you're okay. That doesn't mean let your water go, you know, for a week when you have babies, uh, when you're growing out discus fry, but it, it means chillax a little don't go crazy about water changes if you don't have to test your water let your water tell you what's going on the fish will also tell you that's the one one thing I love about discus if they're not happy they'll tell you they'll start to get dark you'll see changes you'll you'll either they'll get heavy heavy peppering or they'll just darken up they'll clamp their fins they are very good at telling you when they're unhappy and they're good at telling you when they are happy. Look at how bright these guys are. All their fins are up. They're fine. They're happy and they're healthy. And they're telling me that. Right now, the program I'm on with these guys is I do a water change 
once a week. I do about a 65% water change, thereabouts. It can fluctuate a little bit, but thereabouts. I change, uh, I have two filters on this particular tank. So I have one on the right and one on the left. So I'll do one one month and then the next month I'll do the other and I alternate between that. That way I always have a good biological filter. What's a biological filter? Well that's all that good bacteria in your filter that builds up. It's also in your substrate, it's also on your plants, it's also on the glass, it's on the heaters. This is microscopic biological material that is actually beneficial for the water quality of your tank. Now, if you have a bare bottom tank and you have no plants, no nothing in your tank, nothing but fish, and you have, you know, maybe just a one sponge filter, guess what? You're not going to have a good biological uh, balance in your tank. So you're going to have to do more water changes. So that's just something to think about. You know, you, you can make this hobby less work if if you do it right and that's what you want some people like the bare bottom tanks but i want to tell you something that i've noticed about bare bottom tanks and discus go and look at some videos on youtube and you'll notice something about the the fish um i it's really weird they a lot of times they're just sitting there i, I can't believe it it's like weird you'll see a big beautiful tank 180 gallons and maybe it has you know 10 discus and they're all lined up in a row and they're just kind of hovering there in midair and there's nothing in the tank but maybe you know one piece of driftwood some people love that look and god bless you if that's what you want and you're happy with that fine but to me i think if i was a discus fish would i want to live in that tank they look bored to tears. They're literally just sitting there. They're not doing anything. There's no natural behavior at all. Uh, maybe when it's feeding time, that's the big action. You know, you put some food in there and they all go crazy. But then after that, they all go back to just hovering in place, kind of. You know, they swim around a little bit. But I, I just think there's a big difference when you have a community tank that looks more natural. They act more natural. That's been my experience. That's been my observation you know let me know what you guys think do you do you think that's true i mean go look at some bare bottom discus tanks and you know see look at the behavior of the fish do they look happy what are they doing are they doing natural behaviors like look at that fish right there that pigeon blood just pecked at that leaf there they do that they like to actually eat the algae off the leaves and or whatever, maybe they're eating little, you know, microscopic diatomes or whatever that you can't even see. Um, but these fish like to dig through the substrate and hunt for little bits of food. They like to pick at the rocks. They like to hide behind things. It actually, think about it, if you were a fish, wouldn't you rather have all of these things around you that mimic what it would be like in your natural habitat? Of course you would. You know, some could argue, well, yeah, but a bare bottom tank is easier to maintain. The water's cleaner. I don't agree with that. Oh, well, I'll say, let me, let me correct that. I agree it's easier to maintain because you don't have to clean anything but the glass and, and change the water. Okay, I'll give you that. But everything else is a negative in my opinion. I just think that the fish don't look happy. Their behavior seems like they're bored to tears. They just kind of hang there and swim a little bit and eat, and that's it. Um, these fish, I've actually seen them play. The snake skin, for an example, does this game with the bubbles that come up where he actually plays. He likes a very specific type of bubble, and he'll try to catch it. Um, other fish, I, I see one fish likes to move the plants around in here. You know, another one likes to make piles of rocks. She'll actually eat a rock and spit it out and make a pile of rocks. This is stuff you're not going to see in a bare bottom tank. Um, so anyway, you can tell I'm definitely a proponent for community discus tank with substrate, with plants, whether they're live or silk or plastic. That's, you know, that's the fun of the hobby. You get to choose all that and decorate it the way you want. I mean, look at that fish swimming through those leaves. That's a happy fish.